Hey, good morning, church family. How are we doing this morning? Good. Hey, I don't know who was clapping, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah. All right. Well, we got a, a full house this morning. Excited to see all these kids and hear from them here in just a little bit. A few announcements before we got started. So uh, something you'll see that, that started last week and a little bit this week, you'll see before and after service. So some of our announcements are kind of flipped through on the screen. Um, so that way we can kind of keep you in, in tune with what's coming up or what's happening in the up and coming weeks. Uh, we'll also try to give you a heads up on the, the most immediate things that are happening. So we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to be involved. That being said, next week is business meeting. Woo! Yeah. Hey, hey, but the good thing is, I, I think about, you know, business meetings in general are sometimes, eh. When you compare this year a business meeting, what this is going to look like compared to this time last year, it's a whole different story, right? Amen. So last year we were thinking about, well, what are we going to do? And this year we're thinking about, what are we going to do? So we're excited to, to uh, share what's happening with the life of the church. We're excited to uh, share uh, yeah, a financial update and committees update and things like that with you guys. So if you can, directly after church on Sunday, we'll have our church business meeting. Immediately following that, we will have a band interest meeting. So if you are interested in singing, playing, worship, being part of the worship team, being part of the, the media team that, that drives the, uh, the soundboard and things like that, uh, stick around after the business meeting. We're going to plug in, just kind of see who's interested and, and make some plans on what that's going to look like going forward. So it's super, super excited. You guys, as you drove by and drove in this morning, did you see anything different? Sarah, what'd you see? Yes. Inside and outside, you come in to nicely, freshly steamed carpet. You look, drive in on the outside, you see things that have been repaired and painted and power washed and um, just amazing work that we've done behind the scenes. We, we've got some wiring that's being pulled, some, just a lot of things to help set us up for success going forward. Brandon was saluting from the back. He's not. He's looking for someone. But I had to call him out because it distracted me just a little bit. All right. Um, so we announced it last week, but just wanted to let you guys know as well. Uh, we are taking up a love offering today for the Wilsons. Um, you guys know that uh, they're in the process of adopting twins. And so there's a lot that goes into that to, uh, to getting to, to pick up the babies and, and everything that goes along with that. Um, instead of taking up a separate offering, what we'll ask you guys to do is just indicate it if you pay by check, uh, indicate it on your check, or if you need an envelope, just write Wilson's on it, and we'll make sure it gets uh, allocated appropriately. So um, if you don't make it in time as we pass the offering plates around, there are two offering boxes in the back on either side, little black boxes hanging up on the walls. Uh, feel free to, to put it in an envelope and drop it in there as well. <sighs> There's a lot going on. I feel like the micro machine man, but not talking near fast enough. Anything that I'm missing... You guys can't see it from the back, but seeing all of these tired faces just makes this daddy heart happy. All right, let's start off in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Um, thank you for this weekend and this past week. God, we've had opportunity to, uh, to upkeep and beautify your church. We had the opportunity to pour into our kiddos and let them hear from you. God, we're excited to hear uh, what's happening in the life of this church and to see you move. God, we ask that we would give our, our, our praise and our faith and, our, and put our faith and trust in you, Christ, that we know that you can do all things. God, we ask that you would help us to stay focused on you as we worship this morning. Uh, we ask that you would set aside the distractions of the day, help the technology work, help the, uh, just everything glorify you this morning. God, we're, we're thankful for Pastor Robbie, and we look forward to hearing his message. Just help us to prepare our hearts for that as well. It's in Christ's name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. amen. You guys stand and join with us this morning.
this morning if you'll come forward yeah. Yeah. good one more one more I see plenty of young men need one more helper there we go all right Heavenly Father, we are thankful for today. We're thankful for the opportunity to recognize you through the, the worship of giving. God, we uh, ask that you would help us to uh, remember that you're the giver of all good things. God, that we would be um, just faithful to you and uh, what you've asked us to give back to you. God, that you would use it well and help us to be good stewards of it as you continue to grow this church and to share your good name across, uh, across Farmersville and across the world. God, we're thankful for today and just ask that you would bless this offering. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
or you hear the Lord working. So a couple of things. One, as we sing, I see a generation rising up to take their place with selfless faith and see this room full of kids up at the front. Got a little, got a little, right? So the other thing is, is I got distracted because it's rude to leave your cup in the middle of worship. But as we sing, uh, heal my heart and make it yours, this is a side of the cup that I saw. It's like, fixed it. So I'm distracted with the day to day and God's like, I've got it. I'm raising up these kids. This church is raising up these kids to follow me. And guess what? We had a work day. We had all this stuff. It's not about the cup. God fixed it. Anyway, just had to share that. A little distracted, but we'll go. We'll keep going.
these songs just to remind us how worthy you are, how much we owe to you for the death and resurrection of Christ on the cross. God, we're so thankful for the opportunities that you give us. We're thankful for the love that you show us each day. Help us to uh, remember that as we show love to others throughout the week. God, prepare our hearts to, to hear from these uh, teenagers and these kids. And God, hear us, let us hear from your word as we open up your word today. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You guys may be seated. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask if our, our youth that went to the youth weekend would come stand right down here in front of the stage. We'll try to keep Ashlyn from having to climb any stairs this morning. She's recovering from knee surgery. And I want to brag on Ashlyn just for a moment. She has been a trooper. She's in extreme pain even this morning, and I'm really proud of her. She showed a lot of perseverance and grit this weekend. Right, students? Yeah. Yes, so I'm very proud of Miss Ashlyn. So I asked a couple students to speak. Abby, come on down here. You're going to go first. Abby's going to say a few words about the youth weekend and how her friends did and what, it, what, what all we worked on. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so this weekend we... Am I loud enough? I don't know how close to hold it. Beat the mic. Okay. Um, so we got there Friday night. Um, we had our first like group session. Um, the way they did it, they had an hour of worship, like music, and then an hour for the for the message. Um, and then after that, we had a silent disco, which I don't know if any of you have been to a silent disco, but some of these kids, they get down at a silent disco. <laughs> um, I think bedtime was like midnight on the first day. So. Amen. <laughs> um, Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so, yes, we bedtime was at 12. I think we actually went to bed at 1-ish. We got up at 6.30 the next morning. Um, and we had Bible studies all day. We had group sessions and then, um, like, small group sessions where we kind of broke out and had time with our own people. Um, and the morning session, the whole group session, was my favorite part of the whole weekend. Um, the speaker was giving us a seminar on how to evangelize. And it was very, um, like, personalized. Like, we're students. We don't, we're, we don't have time or money to go to Africa every other weekend. Like, we, he gave us, like, very realistic tips on how to just talk to people about the Lord. Um, and, like, for example, he said, if you see a waiter or a waitress with a tattoo, ask them about the tattoo. Say, oh, how does this, what does this mean to you? Um, and then they start talking about what their tattoo means to them. Um, and then that gives you a chance to, oh, that means so much to you. Let me tell you what the Lord means to me. Um, it was a lot of things that were just like very, very easy to do, very specific, yes. Um, and then that night we had a bonfire some of us didn't go to the bonfire. We played phase 10, but that's beside the point. Um, I think everyone really enjoyed it. It was very, like, it was really personal. We had so many small group sessions um, where we could just get to know each other. And I have had a great time this weekend getting to know these girls. I haven't really had a chance to do that yet, but it was, it was very fun. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, Zeph Zephaniah is going to say a few words. He was voted on by his peers. He was the, the lucky short straw man to speak this morning. Zeph, tell us about the weekend and what the Lord did in your life. Well, I had a very good time. Um, probably my favorite subject it was the sleeping, but I didn't get that much either. <laughs> There's so many people yelling. Um, my favorite thing was probably also the, the jail blasting because shooting guns is very fun. And I ha got to learn a lot because we ha we all were worshiping together and we got to fellowship. I had a good time. We all go go got to glorify God. And we got to personalize with each other and learn from each other. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, Miss Mandy Clark is, she's going to say a few words, and then, and then Miss Judy, the kids call her, they now call her Miss J, she's been officially accepted, 
my mother-in-law, Judy Patterson. So, all right, Mandy, tell us about the weekend. Wow, there's so much to tell about this weekend. It was amazing. These kids are troopers. Um, we had some amazing speakers talking about how we need to bury the word in our heart, deep down in our heart, so when we go through those rivers and valleys that it's there. We don't lose that. And um, we're not bench warmers. God did not save us to be sitting on the bench. We're supposed to get out there and tell everybody else about the gospel and the good news and have them come join us. So I'm a newbie, and to get to come and be with these kids was just such an honor and blessing for me as I got to know them name by name. I'm so proud. And, um, but what I learned a lot was as you watch these kids worship, you just have to just go some a different place. And it was so amazing. And one of the things that really came out to me, if you have the... The, the theme, don't let anyone despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in impurity. So they set examples for me. And we heard over and over again that we often say the youth are the church of tomorrow. They're not. They're the church of now. And I'm an old person, and I'm the church of now, too. And whether that's going with the youth or whether that's doing whatever it is the Lord leads us to do here, we're here now for our reasons that God has put us here for. And that's what I got out of the weekend. Amen. Yay. Amen. So um, while, while they're up here, we had two amazing decisions. Um, yes, amazing is right. Um, Dylan, we call him Dacus, right here, and Matthew Lannon, right here. They both made professions of faith this weekend to follow Jesus Christ. And then we had two rededications uh, where students have accepted Christ in the past, but they knew that they needed to rededicate their life to Christ and feel that fresh passionate energy again in their walk with Christ and that was at least there's probably more that didn't let us know but Emma right here and Damien right here both dedicated their life to the Lord praise the Lord for that so be praying for Matthew Lannon and for Dylan for Dacus over here now they're praying about baptism and they're scared to death to walk the aisle that might be why they're sitting on the front pew. That just dawned on me. Um, but no, in all seriousness, as you guys know, that's another big step. And we talked about baptism last night, and I challenged them. Because in the New Testament, you see that they were saved and they were baptized. Um, so we, we talked about that last night and, and what that means in Scripture. And, and we, I challenged them through that discussion. So thank you guys. Thank you to all of our leaders. Derek's down here hiding. Um, <laughs> But we ended up with four leaders and 17 students. And it was just a wonderful group. You guys can go and have a seat. So these students already went to a worship service this morning with a full worship set, a full band, and then a full message. Um, our, our, keynote, our main speaker was a man named Daniel. He, he was born with no arms. And... The look on our students' faces when Daniel walked up on stage and he has no arms. And they were kind of looking at each other like, what's going on? They didn't expect that. And then he dropped a paper off the podium the first night. He grabbed that paper and he lifted up his foot all the way up to the podium and dropped the paper on the podium. And all the students in the place were like, you could hear a pin drop. And he began to share about his value in the Lord and about the challenges throughout his life that challenged his view of value because he had no arms. The ups and the downs of life, people making fun. And then he tied it into this generation of students who struggle with something very similar, but he made it clear to these students, in light of all the struggles that your generation has, 
You still have a mission. You still have a purpose. We've got to push past that. So each and every teaching time we had, each and every small group session that we had, that's what we were driving home, step by step, inch by inch. And as Miss Judy said, it, it really is the church of today whenever we see our students. And we need to look at them like that, and we need to treat them like that. We need to look at them like they are ready to work right now. And that's what Paul said to Timothy. Don't let anyone despise you for your youth, but love each other. Knit together, right? And Timothy probably had some issues with that because he was young. Today, we're going to preach from Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 is where our message is focused. A new sermon series called Rooted, Setting Roots, Deep and Wide. Whenever you see a tree that's been planted, one of my greatest fears, especially in this area of the country, is you get some really good straight line winds throughout the year. It'll be still and quiet, and 20 minutes later in this area of Texas, or even on the Gulf Coast, you'll have 35 mile an hour winds out of nowhere. And whenever I look at a tree, especially a younger tree, one of the first things I think is, I wonder how long that's going to last. I wonder how long that tree can hang. It hasn't had time to set its roots. It hasn't had time to find structure. It hasn't had time to grow in the way that it needs to grow, to adapt since the time it's been planted, to actually make this soil its home from being moved from another soil. I remember one time a family member moved like 22 oak trees. Spent a pretty penny on these oak trees. And he wanted to move them to this one area of the property. And I remember my grandfather saying, that's not going to work. We don't have water over there to irrigate these oak trees. It's in sandy loam soil, red dirt, and a ton of sand. The roots aren't going to do right. The oak trees, there's a reason why there's not one oak tree on that entire side of the property. He said, oh, I'll make it work. I'll water them every time I'm here. And three years later, every tree was dead. Thousands of dollars. Sometimes we do call on young people to do something that they're really not ready to do. We expect our young people to go out and change the world and go out and do the things that the Bible calls them to do. And whenever we see that they're finding their independence, as adults, we start to back off. We finally get a break. We finally get to sit down and relax and we finally get to watch them go do something. And there's a problem with that. They feel the release of the adults like it's, on, like it's on them and they're on their own. That's, that's not biblical discipleship. In biblical discipleship, as people grow older in the Bible, biblical figures, you know what they do? They work harder. They get more passionate. They get more intense. They get more energetic because they realize their days are now numbered. But in America, we miss that somehow. In America, we now have the thought that as we get older, we take our foot off the gas to enjoy life. Folks, my enjoyment of life needs to be enjoying working for the Lord. And whenever I'm not as busy one day when I'm retired, when I'm not working for the man, whatever that means, when I'm not teaching school as a business teacher, or I'm not doing uh, something else on the side, I want to put more time, more energy into going out and preaching the gospel, going out and focusing on our students, going out, focusing on senior adults. We need to empower each other. We need to support each other. If we're going to be rooted as a church, we've got to thrive in complete unity. And I don't mean unity in the way like, like, a, like Paul's writing the Titus, you know, avoid foolish quarrels and controversies. I'm not talking about that unity that, that Paul would be talking about uh, in Colossians, I'm actually talking about we're working in unity like we saw last Sunday on our work day. I haven't been here but just a little over a year or two or however long I've been here, including interim time. But for years and years before that, to the best that I've heard, and I've heard a lot of tidbits of history, it's been a long time since we've had this kind of activity on this campus to do work to the Lord's house. Folks, I couldn't go to a closet. I couldn't walk a hallway. I couldn't go in a bathroom. I couldn't go in a Sunday school room. I couldn't go anywhere. In the gym, in the kitchen, on the grounds outside, even in the rain, slopping wet. Wet gumbo, nasty. 
Everywhere I turn, we had people here working at every turn. And we adapted and overcame because we had outside projects to redo siding and paint uh, the wrought iron fence and to, to paint some trim and replace some fascia and to do a little bit more siding work. We had all these plans for outside and inside. And then whenever it rained and rained and rained, okay, Lord, you're telling us something. We're going to work inside. And folks, the amount of things that got done was amazing, but that's not the most important thing. We came together, young and old, and we did it together. We need those moments in our church's history where in light of good and bad in history that every church has, our church has its share. And we can look back and say, y'all remember that time when we all came together and went nuts on a Sunday? We enjoyed a burger, a hot dog, and then we went and worked our rear ends off. You remember we replaced that siding that was completely falling apart? You could put your finger through it. You remember I was out wiping windows with you that hadn't been cleaned in years outside? You remember the power washing? It looked like a new sidewalk. You remember the kitchen when we were wiping this down or the gym floor or the baptistry as it was being cleaned? Or Guys, and then the week before and then since, people have been up here still working. Momentum is contagious. Ministry is contagious. Whenever we start to move, whenever we start to progress in the kingdom work, in our faithfulness, to adhere to what the gospel is telling us to do, and then we go do it. You know what? People notice. People start looking around going, wow, what's Trinity doing? And it's not for our pride. It's for the glory of God. Amen? Sarah got a call the other day with a question from First Baptist Farmersville. Hey, do you, do you think Brother Robbie would like the, uh, y'all's church and First Baptist to join together for like a Christmas event? I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to say anything that's insensitive, but I don't know how often our phone has rang in the last 10 years to do something with First Baptist Farmersville. I love Bart Barber. I love the staff. I just don't, for, for whatever reason, we haven't done a ton of collaboration with them, and I'll leave it at that. This weekend, uh, Mr. Derek and I were, were talking to the youth pastor at First Farmersville. He's like, man, guys, he starts laying out kind of what they were talking about in a staff meeting, Derek and I were just smiling. That's great. People start to notice whenever they're working on the porch outside, replacing rotten posts. Bobby Westmoreland, I don't think Bobby's here today with Dina, but uh, his team is out there, and they started noticing more and more traffic driving down the road. I mean, it started out normal traffic, and then by the end of their time together, it was like cars driving real slow, looking, what's going on? What are they doing up at the church? People start to see that. They say, hey, God's on the move. Something's happening up at the church. What's going on? What's gotten into them? That's what Paul is challenging the Colossians to. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 says, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. And in this series, we're going to go on into verse 7 uh, next week. Rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Now today, as we focus a little bit more on verse 6 and 7, that's next week, but on verse 6 today, you begin with the word, therefore. Now remember, in the original manuscript, you don't see a verse number. You didn't have space for verse numbers. You didn't have space for a lot of punctuation. You didn't have space for big capital letters normally. You had emphasis in the way that the, the writing was. That's what tells us today when we interpret the original Greek, what was going on likely in these copyists that we have, these manuscripts. Well, when Paul says, therefore, as the first word of this passage, it means for that reason, and then he says whatever he's going to say. That's what therefore means. For that reason or for this reason. Well, what was Paul saying? Verse 5 that he would say, for that reason. Verse 5 says, For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Then he says, therefore. What's he talking about therefore? His firmness of faith in Christ. And he doesn't say my firmness. What does he say? Your faith in Christ. Look at your neighbor and say your faith. Your faith. Yeah, he... He's, he's writing them as an exhortation, an encouragement. And then he says, therefore, as in 
with your faith in Christ in mind, therefore, as you received Christ Jesus. This weekend was a great reminder for me of that moment when I received Christ Jesus. And I want you this morning to think for just a few moments about the time that you received Christ Jesus as King. The time that you made Christ Jesus Lord of your life. You placed your faith in Him. Ask for forgiveness of your sin. Think about that moment when that happened. Whenever you received Christ Jesus. Now, Paul's not just talking about that moment. If you look at this word in the original language, to receive, that word is normally used whenever people are educated. They received an education. You ever heard your parent, whenever you're kind of talking back and you were a kid, and your dad said, I'm, I'm about to educate you on something. <laughs> and your mama didn't have to say it. Your mama just looked at you and you knew she was about to educate you. Right? And, and you knew, I, I'm, I'm receiving it, mother. I'm good. My apologies, mama. I knew not to backtalk my mother. She would chase me with that wooden spoon all over the house. And then when my dad got home, I would not run. I might hide the wooden spoon. I might have thrown a few away. But I received exactly what I needed to receive about my behavior, about my respect, about my mother's worldview, and about my father's authority. I knew what it meant when dad walked in and just stood there and I was running in circles in a living room covering my rear end. And my mom was about done. No cell phones either, so I had no inkling when he would show up. No Live 360 to track my father. He popped in whenever he got home. And I would immediately stand at attention and just, here it comes. Whenever we received Christ Jesus, yes, you accepted Christ, and from that moment forward, you began to take your steps, your baby steps into Christianity. Prayerfully, you became a, a disciple of Christ. You began to be discipled by someone who's investing in you. You didn't just receive the good news of eternity, you received citizenship in the family of God. You're a citizen of heaven now. You're just on loan here on earth as our body grows and grows old for many of us and aches and pains happen and the ups and downs of life happen. We're not just here to decay and grow old together. We're here to go out and tell people about Jesus together. Right there is where a Southern Baptist normally gives a big amen. Thank you. Who was that? That was a good amen. Good job, Emma. But yet... There's more to receiving than just saying a prayer, asking Jesus to be Lord of your life, to forgive you of your sin. Paul's packing more into this, what we're supposed to comprehend by receiving. Romans 10, 9 through 11 says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. You will be saved. Then he says this, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the Scripture says, anyone who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. So, what's the problem? These folks receive Jesus. Why does Paul need to write a letter? Why does Paul need to even encourage them? We've received Jesus in this room. Why are you here this morning? You've already received Him. You've already called on His name. He's already forgiven you for your sin. He's already died on the cross for your sin. You already know where you're going whenever you die. Then you see this phrase, Christ Jesus the Lord. Now you get to see what Paul is getting at. He doesn't just say Jesus of Nazareth. He doesn't just say Christ Jesus or King Jesus. He adds on the Lord. Why? Paul is pointing out, and when he's about to challenge them to go walk in it, he's pointing out one quick reminder, the Lord. He's not just Christ Jesus. He's not just King Jesus. He's also Lord over all. Almighty. We submit to Him. Whenever you see the word Lord, it's, it's Master of all. It's a title that requires you to lower yourself. We talked last night among the youth in our small group time about worship and how whenever, if God was to be standing right here, there is no way that we could stand here and look Him right in the eye without falling down before Him. 
we think sometimes worship is just caring a lot because we equate it to the worldly things that we sort of worship. But we see throughout text, whenever God appears, people can't even look at God. They can't even fathom God, His majesty, His holiness, everything He is, His almighty power. We cannot stand in His presence. We must fall down before Him. Why? Because we can't even comprehend His glory. We can't even fathom it. So Paul adds on, Lord. He takes it up a notch as a reminder. Then he says, so? <laughs> Christ Jesus the Lord, so? Walk in Him. Now the original text actually reverses this. If you read the Greek, it says, in Him walk which I happen to like the original more, even though it's a little more clunky. In Him walk. Go out and do it. Go out and walk in Him. 1 John 2, 6 says, Whoever says he abides in Him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Who's he? Jesus. This morning, I declared to you that two young men received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. What's the expectation now? It's not guilt. It's not condemnation. It's that they go out and they walk. Whose responsibility is it to help them with that? Each and every student sitting here. You say, that's right. They need to hold them accountable. Make sure. Before you get too carried away, guess what? Each and every person in this congregation as well. Just because we minister generationally to contextualize the gospel... And then we gather together on Sunday mornings in a large group, all ages. Just because we break out on Wednesdays or on Sunday mornings for Bible study doesn't mean that we're hands-off in life. It doesn't mean that we're hands-off whenever they go to school. Well, I hope they do okay. We know teachers. We know principals. We know admin. We can encourage them. We can love on them. We can keep track of them. We can hold them accountable. Walk. Walk with Him. When I think of people in our history, the giants of our faith, who have walked with Christ Jesus in ways that, to me, are beyond faithful. Hall of Famers in the faith. Lottie Moon has to be at the top of that list. Listen up, gentlemen. Lottie Moon was a missionary to China. And now we have the Lottie Moon Christmas offering every year that the Southern Baptist Convention puts on. Since the Southern Baptist Convention named an annual offering after Lottie Moon, it's received more than $2.8 billion. What does that mean? Well, the International Mission Board funds missionaries. It pays them uh, a salary. It provides support for them whenever they go to training, linguistic school to learn languages of unreached people groups. But then there's always something that they need on the field. And the Lottie Moon Christmas offering allows funding for things like, I was in Macedonia one time with a gentleman named Charles, and he was trying to minister to some Muslims and some Turkish Muslims in the mountain region. And he's got this beautiful Volvo van. And I said, Charles, I love your van. That had to be a pretty penny. He said, Lottie Moon. I said, what? He said, Lottie Moon. I asked for it for three years. And they got me a van, man. He was hauling like 20 children from school to a after-school study. It was a Bible study. Couldn't call it that. Okay, That's what the Lottie Moon impact is. Well, what did she do? She went to China and was completely broke was unsupported, she wrote back to the states constantly, to the North American Mission Board, to the, Interna uh, to the uh, a foreign mission board at the time, now it's called International Mission Board, she wrote back constantly asking, I need help, these children are, are starving, I need help, they need Jesus, I need help, they need Bibles. Guys, she was like on the forefront of women empowerment. She wrote the boldest letters you've ever seen to a group of men calling them out in their faith. Lottie Moon, I believe she was five foot one. She died on a ship, mostly from malnourishment. Gave everything she had away. 
Here's what she said on the inside of her Bible after she passed. She had written this note on the inside flap of her Bible. Oh, that I could consecrate myself, soul and body, to His service forever. Oh, that I could give myself up to Him so as never more to attempt to be my own. She decided as at a young age, I want everything the Lord wants for me and I want nothing else. Paul says, walk with Him. You've received it. you got the whole package. You understand it now. You've been taught it. You've been educated. Now, walk with Him. Walk with Him. Whatever that means in your context, go do it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank You. I thank You that we have an opportunity to celebrate today what You're doing. I thank You, Lord, that we have received You for those of us in the room who have accepted Jesus Christ. I thank You today that we do get to walk with You, that we walked with You all week. We walked with You last Sunday. We walked with You this weekend uh, at youth retreat. People were praying for the youth throughout the weekend. But Lord, there might be someone in this room they're not putting their faith into practice. And this morning they're challenged. Lord, show them where they can do that. Whether it's at work, at school, athletics, grandkids, nieces and nephews, in a community. Allow us opportunities not just to receive, but to go and walk. We thank You and we praise You, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus we all pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing the beautiful hymn, Amazing Grace.
Let them know that we would love to receive them and let them know, know more about us. You might have seen on the announcements we have another new members class coming up. That's for folks who are interested in learning more about our church or folks that have been here for a while and they want a refresher. We would love for you to come and be a part of that. I'm going to ask Mr. BJ back in the back. Would you close this in prayer this morning?